Hey guys, today we're revisiting Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. This is a movie I think gets hated on way too much, and most people that hate it haven't watched it for years. I said what I said, and if you disagree, well, it's the internet, so. <laughs> Anyways, here we've got the minifigures. I'm going to show you how to upgrade the 2008 LEGO minifigs and how to build better versions with more modern pieces. So let's get into it and enjoy the video. So at the beginning of the movie, Indy comes out of the back of the trunk and he doesn't have his jacket on. So I went ahead and used the jacketless Indy from the 2009 LEGO Indiana Jones sets. Then of course he's got the classic Indiana Jones belt with the whip. I gave him old man Han Solo's head from The Force Awakens. Now this is the one from the Millennium Falcon because there's also another version that actually I think looks more like Harrison Ford, but I also think it looks a little bit older. So this is the head I'm gonna use for the Dial of Destiny Harrison Ford. That way you get all the different ages of Indiana Jones across the years. Anyways, that's the head that I used here. And of course he's got the brand new 2023 Indiana Jones hat to tie it all together. I look at Mac and all I can think is, Jonesy! Anyways, to build Mac, I used the torso from Satipo from the new Temple of the Golden Idol from 2023. I used this head from one of the firefighters from the Lego Batman movie, some swept back brown hair, and the Indiana Jones printed legs to give him a little bit of detail there as well. I've always thought that the torso for Spalco from 2008 was super, super accurate, but thankfully we do get a much better head this time around. That old head on this figure is literal nightmare fuel. <laughs> but to upgrade the head, I used this head from Monica from Friends, the TV series, but it's also been used on several characters over the years like Tina Goldstein and things like that. Of course, she's got the original Spalco hair and torso, and the legs come from the Raccoon Girl costume. Uh, CMF figure because then you get the gray up top and black boots on bottom that really look like the moon. For Mutt Williams, you will need the 2008 Mutt Williams torso, but everything else came on other figures. So these legs on bottom have black boots on bottom and blue pants on top. And the cool thing about that is I had to destroy these legs. These came from Newt Scamander and I used the eraser method to get the printing off. But these legs have since come in the uh, Lego build a minifigure station at the Lego store. They're not there right now, but they're easier to get because they were there at one time. Anyways, of course, he's got a knife. I gave him this generic head from Star Wars and the swept back brown hair to finish the look. So after Indy goes through all the craziness at the train station and everything, we do finally get to see him in the brown jacket. So to build this, I used the legs and torso from the Raiders of the Lost Ark Indy from 2023 with the hat from 2023 and that same Han Solo head we were talking about earlier from The Force Awakens. Here we have the Cemetery Guardians, and these figures came in the Cemetery set from 2009, and honestly, these look so good, I really don't know what upgrades you could make to them. In fact, they even had double-sided heads back in the day. That is so cool, and I think these have actually aged really, really well. So, no changes here, just gotta use the figures LEGO gave us back in the day. We did get a ton of Soviets in this movie, and we did get Lego minifigures of them back in the day, so just go ahead and use those Soviets. You could change out the heads to something more modern if you wanted, but I don't know. I grew up with these sets, so I'm super nostalgic for them. One other thing to point out is when I was going through my figures for the showcase, I realized I have a misprint. Check out the torso. It doesn't have any of the gold printing that this one on the right has. It must have missed that part in the printing process where it got the gold because it doesn't have the gold lapels, the buttons, or the belt buckle. So that's pretty wild. Speaking of the Soviets, we've got Dovchenko, and he does have kind of an aged face on the original figure, so I went ahead and swapped that out for the Lex Luthor head. Uh, I think the Loki head also works pretty well too, but just to give him something a little more modern so he matches a lot of the other figures now. For all the minifigs we did get for Crystal Skull back in the day, I was always shocked they never gave us Oxley. He would have come perfect in that, like, campground set. But anyways, to build Oxley, I used the head from Old Man Luke Skywalker with the angry face to show he's kind of in some mental anguish. He's got this shoulder-length strawberry blonde hair. The torso is the flipped-around torso from Sheik Amar. That way it looks like he's kind of got his, like patched poncho on that we see in the movie and of course he gets the crystal skull since he's kind of obsessed with it in the movie and now we get to my girl marion ravenwood i always love when she pops up in this movie it's so great and karen allen's just such an awesome actress Anyways, the torso comes from the 2008 Kingdom of the Crystal Skull Marion with some khaki legs. I swapped her arms out for these light blue arms with tan hands, and the hair and head actually come from Joyce Byers from Stranger Things. 
At the end of the movie, we meet the Akator Temple Defenders, and I really like these figures that came in the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull uh, set, the giant actual temple that they had, and then these were also in the San Diego Comic-Con exclusive set, so they're out there. They're not super, super rare or anything. No back printing, but there was printing on the back of the heads, and honestly, not too much to change about these because they look pretty good even all these years later. And finally, we have the crystal skeletons from the end of the movie. Now, this entire plate they're sitting on is actually from the Temple of the Crystal Skull set, where you did get three crystal skulls and skeletons, but of course in the movie, there's actually 13. So I've always wanted to like make all 13 or I guess buy 10 more and get the full thing, but I haven't done that yet. Maybe it'll be a mock in a future video. And finally, when they all come back together, you get the alien and I recommend using the CMF alien because it does look pretty good. It's pretty dang close to what we see in the movie. And as far as Lego head shapes go, the head shape is actually kind of close to the crystal skull. Conspiracy maybe? Alright guys, let me know what you thought of this video in the comments down below. Be sure to hit like and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys on the next video. And stay tuned because my Dial of Destiny showcase is coming up in just a few days. Well, you made it to the end of the video. Thanks for hanging out with me today. And don't forget to hit like and subscribe, and maybe check out one of my other videos listed here.